Hello? Hello, hello? Kidding. But could you imagine, though? I can't wait for the new Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Thank God you rung me, though. Life has been so boring in here. There's only one thing that keeps me going, and that thing is Rainbow Six Siege. A game so unbelievably bad and frustrating that it has so kept me stop. successfully addicted for six years. On and off, I will admit, I'll go through long breaks of Siege, only to see a clip that reminds me of how much I hate myself, forcing me to crawl back to my computer and open the shittiest launcher known to man, that even inviting a friend to your lobby is a task on par with sucking wet concrete through a straw. But alas, they keep me coming back. And more recently, Siege has been having a re-emergence in gaming, hitting record numbers, I guess. Oh. Now I look at the numbers, they don't look that impressive. But what do I know? I'm just a phone. Until you realize the player count has doubled since November 2022. To which I can think of a certain culprit that may be behind the sudden rekindling of interest of this dumbass game. That motherfucker's cheating! Take my word! However, there is one gigantinormous reason that Siege has made a statistical comeback that is often overlooked. And that reason is that. No! Oh my god. The play. The play of all time. We won that game, trust me. Anyways, I don't know what that guy was talking about on the phone about an underlying reason. Looked like he knew something I didn't. And I hate people that talk down to me. So let's start from the start. There was this bang, a big one at that. This bang creates dense elements, I think. Okay, I don't actually know what the Big Bang did. So let's skip forward a little to- Oh, perfect. The greatest studio known to man creates an FPS that is a little more tactical than its competitors. It has destroyable environments, which I'm not kidding, is one of the most important parts of this game. The fact that you can randomly headshot someone through a wall to which they scream, what the fuck, is both genius and while also insanely frustrating to be on the receiving end of. Anyways, the gunplay was nice and the gameplay was fun, which means the game is a success. And for a time, the game was popular, especially over the old Rona lockdowns. I racked up most of my hours during that time, I will admit. But once again, as all things do, Siege withered away in the tides of time, leading to player counts lower than the life expectancy of a biological girl born in China from the years 1980 all the way to 2016. But as China has Xi Jinping to bring it from a third world country to a thriving super nation, much respect, much respect. I'm holding up my hand right now, you guys can't see me, but I am. Siege has a 20 year old bald boy that bears an uncanny resemblance to one of the game's most iconic operators. Hear that with some stupid ass tagline. Numbers don't lie, but people do. Remember that. that clips that make your body twist and distend an enamored human, and you have a content machine able to scream life into the most decrepit corpses gaming has to offer. And I'm not afraid to admit, Jinxie makes the game look very fun. Whether it be reviewing clips of his viewers, which in itself can be some of the funniest gameplay you'll ever see. His 1v1s, especially against trash talkers, Zim Kids, or Bolo for some reason, were all incredibly funny stuff. I'll be scrolling through TikTok, smoothing out my brain, consuming worthless media instead of confronting thoughts in silence all by myself. And damn, I'll watch a Jinxie clip in LOL IRL. That dude is funny. Talk to most Siege players and they'll talk about Jinxie as a reason for their willingness to pick the game up again. And before the comments that call me a meat writer and how I'm doing tricks all over, I will say that Jinxie has made a huge impact on Siege. The attention he has garnered along with the reinterest in the game is very, very impressive to say the least. But no matter how funny or interesting the creator is, a game can't just come back from the brink of death because it's funny to watch. There has to be a little bit of substance there, you know? And crucify me for saying this. I'll take you all on, Doomslayer style. But Siege is a very, very balanced game. Well, maybe not completely. No! No! I think what has really made the game a joy to play again is the fact that it has such a diverse way of playing it. Siege at this point has become, in my mind, a near perfect yin and yang style balance between gunplay and gadgets. Because you can play Siege League COD title, even though if you do you'll never make it out of plat. Fucking casual. There are operators that support that style of play. Mozzie, Warden, Yana, Amaru are all operators that are guns with a gadget strapped to them. And while some of their gadgets are very powerful, like Yana's infinite drone or Mozzie's intel denial and intel gain through his pests, they all have killing in mind. I don't expect the guy who has Mozzie Elite to be a passive player that waits for gunfights. I imagine a spawn peeking beast that can hit heads like I can hit the blue tablets in urinals. But for every fragger, there is always a good support player. A player that doesn't initiate gunfights for the most part, but will always fight on their terms. 
whether that be using Fenrir to hold a couple entrances and then swing like when they can't see shit because I'm about to go or using Wumai to hold a room that is essential to the side, forcing the attackers to push him instead of nading him out. Or a classic hard breacher main that wants to see a wall open and get that bomb down as soon as possible. Now it's kinda hard to just generalize the whole siege play base as these two styles of play, but when it comes down to it, this is an easy way to communicate an idea without going into the nuances of every single siege play style. People can play Thermite like an Ash, there's no rule saying they can't. But why is it so important that these two styles live in harmony? Well, let me tell you this, you young whippersnappers. I was there when Ash would sprint at you faster than Barry Allen, only for you, the scrub playing Rook with a hollow and silencer, to scream in surprise and get dogged down by the greatest gun in the game while the 12 year old playing Ash types GN in the chat. Fucking scarring, I tell you. There was a time in Siege where rounds lasted as long as I do in 6. Kidding. I've never so much as breathed the same air as a woman. But the game was much more focused on peeking every corner and taking out whoever is staring back at you before they can scream Eureka! Oh, come on. When the time to ADS was instant, there was no problem with just sprinting into sight because your gun would just be on their heads instantly, along with how every operator and their mother was a 3 speed, except for yours, she is a 1 speed, and cameras could be placed outside. The game was just a lot faster. There was nothing wrong with that. A fast round is a good round, one might say. But it left a lot of people with a bad taste in their mouth, you know, because they're just getting dick dad. Siege at this point is still very unique in all aspects, but this was just too fast for a tactical team based game. There was a lot more lone wolf mindsets at this point. Ubisoft saw this extreme all gun, no gadget type of gameplay and decided, okay, let's slow this down. So they added more utility based operators. They slowed down the ADS time and in gave angled grips a purpose. They also dogged on all the top frag operators like Ash, Twitch, Jaeger and remove most ACOGs off defenders, which I'm not opposed to. Giving defenders a way to compete at long range just is never going to be a good idea. This whole idea of gadget good, guns bad comes to a head at the release of Amaru and Goya. But there's, there's no way this guy's calling me again. Fuck off, man. Jesus. Anyways, Amaru sucks at launch. Fuck out of here, Amaru. Oh my god, you're so tra- Oh my god, Amaru, you're so bad. Fuck you! Get out of- get out of here! Let me talk about her vastly more interesting Mexican twink Goya. Goya, for those who have only seen him after his piss poor rework, used to have these canisters attached to deployable shields. Which is pretty cool. He had a low pick rate throughout the low ranks, and even in plat and higher, he was only marginally playable for most of Siege's player base. But pro players? God damn did they have a field day with this motherfucker. Think about this. Goya has three shields. That's one more than two, two more than one, and three more than zero. Right, okay, so we got this. Meaning he can block three doorways. Three doorways with an explosive wall, in layman's terms. Pretty alright, but let's add a Jaeger ADS on top of that. Oh, well now, the shields require a little more effort to get rid of. But it's what, it's what, kind of whatever, it's still doable. It's, I fucking, I got a Zofia and Ash on my team, it's fine. But let's add another one of Siege's more recent additions of the time to the equation. Or oh my. Okay, so now for every one of Goya's shields, you need to blow it up, of course. But first, you need to bait out the ADS. Okay, a little annoying, but whatever. Oh, there's, there's a well, my magnet there as well. Sick. That's three pieces of explosives for one shield. Now you gotta do that three, three fucking times! Because there's three shit On top of whatever else the defenders might have had. A Valk? A Bandit? Whatever, just... Come to terms that you're just not getting into sight. Siege at this point in time was all gadgets, very little guns. With the slowing down Ubisoft has done up to this point, slower operators, slower ADS, it made the game very methodical and all the rounds the exact same. You spend the first minute roam clearing, boom, you got two minutes left, okay? Okay, two minutes left, this is, we can do this. You spend the next minute trying to get rid of Goya's shields, which all burn for a good 20 seconds or so, so let's say generously you got maybe 40 seconds left to take on maybe four or five defenders, depending on how good that roam clearing was, and get that plant down, which is why we saw the birth of the 10 second meta, each round lasting till the very last second because of all the utilities the defenders had. Fucking oh, god, my cow wants to get in, hold on. <laughs> So safe to say, this meta wasn't very fun. Widely considered to be a point where Siege became a gadget clearing simulator instead of an FPS. And with a few more tweaks and nerfs along with buffs, Siege left this era of mind-numbing gameplay. But while there weren't any massive metas that I want to point out from this time to present day, I feel that Siege is finally at that perfect spot. 
where Gunplay and Gadgets feed off of each other to create a very unique and enjoyable experience. Even looking at the operator pick rates from now, and those from earlier in Siege's life, I feel the game is just more generally balanced and enjoyable, which I do think is a part of why this game made such a resurgence. The balance the game has managed to achieve is nothing short of a marvel, which is why all Siege needed was a catalyst to get it going, and Jinxie was exactly that. But for... Jesus Christ. Bitches be blowing up my phone. Might be your mum on the other end. The maps. Night Haven, Emerald Plain, Stadium Bravo, and the Rework Consulate. I didn't actually mind Old Consulate unlike everyone else. But these four names struck fear into any ranked player's heart. Playing any of these maps is the equivalent of trying to shovel glass down your throat. It's just boring. Would that be confusing layouts? Dude, how is he even calling me? Let me... Hold on, let me, let me get rid of this thing. Anyway, remove these maps out of the rank queue. They're so forced. Ubisoft tries inserting these interesting rooms or entry points, but you just end up with a stupid, confusing same-z layout, which I am- Oh my god, make it stop! You hung up on me earlier? Yeah, because you were yapping up a storm. I don't need to hear about this gigantinormous reason and shit. How are you doing this anyway? Doing what? This. This whole no phone business. Whatever I say will be far less interesting than letting you come up with your own story. You've had enough time talking. Let me give the people what they came for. What? You can't do this? It's my video. Therefore, whatever I say is right because I added a moving slideshow to my opinion. Yep, combat. Mm. Mm. Now that chump is gone, I can finally have the limelight. Pretty nervous, actually. I never usually have this many people listening and caring about what I say. But I digress. The reignition of Siege's player base and the interest isn't a coincidence. Quite the opposite, I would say. It's been years in the making, and is mentioned by this gay lord fella. Don't know how you guys watch him, by the way. Every point he spouts is as lukewarm as that motherfucker's brain. Jinxie was the wicked that got the fire going, but that fire needed fuel to burn. The fuel in question? A game philosophy. One that single-handedly saved the game. Gameplay of all else. Now let me explain. No game lasts as long as Siege without changing things up. Ubisoft understood this and decided, fuck everything, let's make this game as fun and interesting as possible. It's clear in the design of all the new operators, the gadget come first and the how comes after. As Garlo's kind of touched on earlier, Siege was a completely different game at launch, going for that realistic gritty gameplay style that very few games had the guts to do. And yeah, a realistic gameplay of PS ain't bad. But trivial ideas like reality and physics get in the way of real fun. Removing bullet holes, a change that improves Siege a lot. Dying to bullet holes gets my blood boiling, I tell ya. But in doing so, Ubisoft gets a little further from that original idea of a realistic FPS for the sake of gameplay. Cameras going outside. Once again, there isn't any real point for cameras to turn off outside. But they do, and the gameplay benefits are insane. Siege over the years has become quite a different game. And that's not a bad thing at all. The sacrifices Ubisoft has made for the sake of gameplay has been a great decision. And there are so many different instances of Ubisoft breaking natural laws to make an even better gameplay experience. The gameplay and meta of Siege, I will confidently say, is in the healthiest state that it's probably ever been. Except for maybe Yana, nerf her. Sure, there are operators that are overpicked and high win rates, but that's just how any game will be. Something will always be a little better than the rest. And the way Ubisoft is taking Siege is a pretty good direction that has paid off immensely for the company. And the theme is just too minuscule a problem to get caught up on, I've found. If you watch the other Garl or Siege video, he talks about his hatred for the crossover skins, silly operator stories and designs and such. This kind of comes from a place of love, because the old lore was just so interesting. The little blurbs each operator had were just memorable. Lion's backstory is quite honestly the most tragic in Rainbow. They were just so special and epic. Sure, I don't like that Ace's social media influencer operator or that stupid neck brace that Fenrir has, but why get so hung up on something so small? Sure, a really cool coherent story and atmosphere would be awesome, but it's just the cherry on top of an already great game. I think why I'm so alright with Siege's current style is because of how each quote unquote break of atmosphere benefits the game immensely. Yana's drone is a great gameplay mechanic. Izami's Kiba barricades add a lot of thinking and flexibility ability to the defenders, and there are so many instances of this occurring, to the point where, dude, I'm happy about it. Sure, the characters will look kind of Marvel superhero-esque, and maybe I'd want them to in a perfect world, but the gameplay benefits just outweighs the bad. Those sieges come back for the brink of death. I still worry about the game, mainly for the reason that there are very few people coming and trying Siege out. While the player count has skyrocketed, it feels more as though the game has had people return instead of garnering a new audience. And with the gigantic skill wall to enter the game, that being map knowledge, learning the recoil, and so on, Siege may not be around as long as I think it will be. But if they stick with gameplay over all else, maybe this game can finally get to that mythical 100 operator mark. But until then, this game fucking sucks.
Garlos from the future here. I waited out the combat and here I am. Been a while since you fellas seen me. Seven months to be exact, but I'm back. No promises on when the next video will be though. Also, these names you're seeing on the screen, number one Garlos fan and Theodore, most loyal patrons of mine. I love you. And if you want your nail up here too, I'll make it a dollar a month so you can join the uncles. And Theodore, if you watch this, get in contact with me. I want to talk. Subscribe if you haven't. Don't know why you wouldn't. And keep those eyes peeled. I'll be back. Don't know when, but I will. And also keep commenting. I read all of them and it gives me something to do at work. But until next time.